Democracy is not easy. It's hard. Living up to our ideals can be difficult even in the best of times, and it can be harder when the future seems uncertain or when, in response to legitimate fears and frustrations, there are those who offer a politics of us versus them, a politics that scapegoats others, the immigrant, the refugee, someone who seems different than us. We have to call this mentality what it is, a threat to the values that we profess, the values we seek to defend. It's because we respect all people that the world looks to us as an example. The colors of the rainbow flag have flown on Parliament Hill. They have lit up the White House. That is a testament to our progress but also the work that remains to ensure true equality for our fellow citizens who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. Our Muslim friends and neighbors, who run businesses and serve in our governments and in our armed forces and are friends with our children and play on our sports teams. We've got to stand up against the slander and the hate leveled against those who look or worship differently. That's our obligation. That's who we are. That's what makes America special. That's what makes Canada special. Here, here in Canada, here in Canada, a woman has already risen to the highest office in the land. In America, for the first time, a woman is the presumptive nominee of a major party, and perhaps president. I have a bias on these issues, but, but our work won't be finished until all women in our country are truly equal, paid equally, treated equally, given the same opportunities as men, when our girls have the same opportunities as our boys. That's who we need to be. And let me say this, because I don't feel particularly politically correct on this issue. I don't believe that these are American values or Canadian values or Western values. I believe, and Justin believes, and I hope all of you believe, these are universal values. And we must be bold in their defense at home and around the world, and not shy away from speaking up on behalf of these values of pluralism and tolerance and equality. I fear sometimes that we are timid in defense of these, these values. That's why we'll continue to stand up for those inalienable rights here in our own hem hemisphere, in places like Cuba and Venezuela, but also in more distant lands. For the rights of citizens and civil society to speak their mind and work for change. For the rights of journalists to report the truth for the rights of people of all faiths to practice their religion freely. Those things are hard, but they're right. They're not always convenient, but they're true. In the end, it is this respect for the dignity of all people, especially the most vulnerable among us, that perhaps more than anything else binds our two countries together. 
Being Canadian, being American is not about what we look like or where our families came from. It is about our commitment to a common creed. And that's why together we must not waver in embracing our values, our best selves. And that includes our history as a nation of immigrants. And we must continue to welcome people from around the world. The vibrancy of our economies are enhanced by the addition of new striving immigrants. But this is not just a matter of economics. When refugees escape barrel bombs and torture, when migrants cross deserts and seas seeking a better life, we cannot simply look the other way. We certainly can't label as possible terrorists vulnerable people who are fleeing terrorism. We can insist that the process is orderly. We can in insist that our security is preserved. Borders mean something. But at moments like this, we are called upon to see ourselves in others because we were all once strangers. If you weren't a stranger, your grandparents were strangers. Your great-grandparents were strangers. They didn't all have their papers ready. They fumbled with language, faced discrimination, had cultural norms that didn't fit. At some point, somewhere, your family was an outsider. And so the mothers, the fathers, the children we see today, they're us. And we can't forsake them. So as Americans and Canadians, we will continue to welcome refugees. And we can ensure that we're doing so in a way that maintains our security. We can and we will do both. We can and we will do both. We're increasing our support to Central America so that fewer families and children attempt the dangerous journey north. This fall, at the United Nations will host a global summit on refugees because in the face of this crisis, more nations need to step up and meet our basic obligations to our fellow human beings. And it will be difficult, and budgets are tight, and there are legitimate issues, and not everybody is going to be helped. But we can try. People of goodwill and compassion show us the way. Greek islanders pulling families to shore, and Germans handing out sweets to migrants at railway stations. A synagogue in Virginia inviting Syrian refugees to dinner. And here in Canada, the world has been inspired as Canadians across this country have opened up their hearts and their homes, and we've watched citizens knitting toques to keep refugees warm in the winter. <laughs> and we've seen your Prime Minister welcome new arrivals at the airport and extend the hand of friendship and say, you're safe at home now. And we see the refugees who feel that they have a special duty to give back and seize the opportunity of a new life. Like the girl who fled Afghanistan by donkey and camel and jet plane and who remembers being greeted in this country by helping hands and the sound of Robin singing. And today, she serves in this chamber and in the cabinet because Canada is her home.
country is not something you build as the pharaohs built the pyramids. A country is something that is built every day out of certain basic shared values. How true that is. How blessed we are to have had people before us day by day brick by brick, build these extraordinary countries of ours. How fortunate, how privileged we are to have the opportunity to now, ourselves, build this world anew. What a blessing. And as we go forward together on that freedom road, let's stay true to the values that make us who we are, Canadians and Americans, allies, and friends, now and forever. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.